it uh, amazes me because uh, when we moved into Polar Mass, we didn't know a lot of people who lived here or the companies. And we got a sense that there was a lot of um, activity. There was a lot of companies that were doing um, some incredible uh, manufacturing and uh, uh, technical work, electronics. So just kind of by um, accident, uh, our architect that was working on uh, us converting the church, Bob Havlis, uh, he was also doing a project for a local company called Sanderson and McLeod. So uh, Bob came to me and said, listen, you know, the president uh, at Sanderson and McLeod, uh, Mark Bursari, uh, is doing a, a, a conference table in their Brush Innovation Center. And they want to do something, you know, interesting. And he mentioned that I might, you know, uh, it might be a good uh, connection. And immediately after talking with Mark for a few minutes, we were kindred spirits. He and I, we come from very different fields, but felt like um, this fusion of, uh, of Sanders and McLeod's history um, and the art and innovation that they do along with uh, uh, the technology and uh, kind of uh, bringing in uh, the latest and greatest would be a great way to showcase the company uh, in this uh, making of a conference table. Few people know that our company is a maker of twisted wire brushes. We've been here for uh, in a present location for probably 60 years, about 60 years. Uh, but innovation in our company is an integral part of our ongoing success. And we make brushes for the cosmetic industry, medical industry, um, gun cleaning industry, and, and other markets, really partnering with people about how to be innovative. Um, you know, as we've grown, we've expanded our capabilities and our facilities. One of the latest has been the brush innovation expansion where people come and work with us on innovative ways to do new things with brushes. Uh, the idea came about what could we do differently inside the actual conference table. It's where the ideas start and it's where people really get a sense of what makes Sanderson McLeod and the local area different. A mutual friend, Bob Havilis, introduced me to, to Bruce. And very quickly after meeting each other, we really thought that there was a connection in terms of how I think our company and Bruce and his team approach innovation. And from there, really the idea of what can we do together came up. And his team went to work coming up with some ideas that were just absolutely revolutionary uh, and really amazing uh, in terms of how they can really represent Sanderson McLeod and something as a functional piece of art. Um, you know, the collaboration with the local school system is, is certainly natural. Um, and, you know, looking outside traditional venues to come up with new ideas is, is great, which is why I think working with Bruce and, and, uh, and, and artists to see how they would approach a, a manufacturing challenge is just, a, is just an opportunity few people have. And I think we're very lucky to have that locally. And of course, I'm very proud of the entire team that put it together. Uh, you know, the, the volunteers that really pitched in and gave different ideas and uh, you know, the, the kids from Pathfinder that really lent their creativity to it. It really, is, it really is, a, is, is an amazing end result for something that started off as just an idea between two guys that love to see how crazy they can make things work. The idea behind steampunk art and design is that we want to bring in the history, and by bringing in the history, that means that we, we want to bring in authentic objects that are relevant and meaningful to the project at hand. So that was kind of an easy uh, find because Sanderson McLeod kept their old equipment and tools and machines for the last 60 years. We knew that we were going to use uh, uh, repurposed uh, pieces uh, of machines that they uh, actually used, e uh, uh, old machines and even s some new machines. When I first decided to pick some pieces to match the drawings that we had, <clears throat> I kept in mind that each one of these machines was a brand new machine at the time, and somebody used this machine with pride and they worked mm -hmm. and helped this company in to develop and, and innovate. Um, I didn't want those machines to go to waste. Um, they, they all have stories. They, they have 
they have a life along with the, with the company. Um, I didn't want to see them get thrown out, so we figured we'd repurpose it. And keeping that in mind all along, knowing that other people use these machines throughout the years, I really wanted to incorporate them in this table. Yeah. You know, I thought that was I thought that was important. And when I saw these bases, a lot of times you'll see old stands stood up and used just the way they normally are. But we wanted to make it a little different and represent the company or where the company came from on, and, and highlight that as well on the, on the stand. Um, so the, we turned them on their side and uh, seemed to work out. Yeah, I, I really like the look. You know, one of the, my missions here in Palmer is to work with local schools uh, to see if we can bring uh, STEM, science, technology, engineering, math, of course, adding art to that, so making it STEAM, uh, but then going one further and making it steampunk. The kind of the punk part is uh, bringing in the history, the authenticity, the meaning. And so I happened to find Pathfinder Vocational School, which is literally right around the block. So after talking to some of the administrators there, uh, they had hooked me up with uh, some of the uh, instructors, uh, including some of the electronics instructors over there. Frank Lagasse, Guy Nizio, and one of the students, Shane Gray. My name is Shane Gray. I'm gonna be learning more of how to do like Arduino and programming and all that. The boards, you can program them. And then depending on what your circuit is, it sends um, data signals to the circuits. I enjoy like all of the steampunk and punk type stuff. And then I can bring it the electronics knowledge that I learned from here back into my cosplays. Hi, my name's Todd Morehouse. I'm the programmer on Modvik's steampunk table that they're designing. My job involves writing Arduino code to be able to communicate with the, the chips on the LED strips that will in, uh, light up the individual pixels on the LED strip, as well as controlling the stepper motor RPM. Arduino is an open source platform that's designed for bringing a higher level of control to microcontrollers, making it easier to implement into other projects and easier to get started in. We have three Arduinos that control, one of them controls the LEDs and two of them control an individual stepper motor. What you can do with any kind of Arduino is you write some code using their Arduino IDE or you can just use Atmel C library and that allows you to control things without having a computer near it. So once you upload this code and it's inside whatever circuit you design, it'll run on its own just like any other microcontroller. At Pathfinder, we uh, use the Arduino board starting in junior year. And as soon as we started using it, I fell in love with it. I thought it was so cool that I could control the world with just code that I've typed with a keyboard. And building up knowledge through teachers like Mr. Nizio and Mr. Legacy, that I was able to come to a point that they said, hey, we need some help programming. We know you have experience with Arduino. Can you help us out with this project over here? That ability to take pieces and use them in unique ways is really, I think, a wonderful way of summarizing the way that this area has engineering talent that does things very differently and much better than I think anywhere else in the world. You know, it, it's Sanderson McLeod. Uh, we just have a, a phenomenal team of a team of people that work together. Um, you know, John Doobie and his staff in the machine shop certainly, you know, lent tremendous amount of experience and, and effort to the project. Uh, Jody Sawyer, our, our head of innovation, uh, Brian Cakley from manufacturing, Ted Snyder, our vice president of operations. Everybody really came together um, with all the work that they're currently doing and with all the workload that they have and found time to really give Bruce and his team the, the brush insights, if you will, uh, that really made the, the work come together. And I think that's pretty special that they would take time to make something uh, this special that people will be able to enjoy for a long time. It became really this really, uh, this incredible uh, three-prong um, collaboration between a local, successful, innovative company here in Palmer, uh, 
my company, Modvik, uh, kind of uh, doing the management and bringing all the, the, the people together and creating this kind of design force uh, on uh, bringing Sanderson and McLeod's history and, and parts and pieces to the project and then also working with uh, the, the local instructors and teachers to help bring this uh, uh, come alive.